I, I think the importance of this conference is really to highlight many of the interconnected issues, not just of climate change, but also bringing together the, the politics, the economics, uh, the, the really underlying social issues that have to be addressed in Paris. Because it's, uh, I think often diplomatically, the framework of the uh, UNFCCC was set up in such a way that we have a, a focus on climate as carbon. And it just becomes a numbers game. Rather than stepping back and asking, what, what are the real impacts that this has on societies? What does this mean for individuals? And if we ask it as a security issue, and not just in terms of violent conflict, but in terms of the, the real experiences of people on the ground, and whether it's migrants or whether it's people in small island states, to sort of see, you know, what, what does this really mean? And what are the options available for people to address it, both not just as mitigation, but as adaptation measures? Because we're, we're to the point now where we have to look not just at decreasing greenhouse gas emissions, but to say, how do we adapt to this new future, uh, which, which is not going to be entirely positive? And, and are there any opportunities to cooperate so that it's not simply state by state, but as a sort of larger global community? And, and I think this is a really great uh, community and network brought together here in The Hague uh, that it really takes some effort. And I'm very glad the Dutch government you know, made an effort to bring everyone together to discuss these issues. I think it's meant, one, to raise awareness of these issues, the security issues, because they've been on the fringes of many of the discussions, and maybe during some of the COP meetings there might be a panel on security, for example, but to, to, to bring a lot of the world leaders and political leaders, ambassadors and the experts together, it brings a, a much clearer voice about defining what are the security implications of climate change and environmental change and then help to frame that issue before the delegates go into the final negotiations in Paris. So I, I, I'm hoping that it's not even just policy recommendations, but I think the framing of the issue so that when people n negotiate or discuss the issue in the media in Paris, then they understand the security aspects of that better. Yes, and it's been a big challenge for us. I, I worked for a number of years with the US security community, such as with the US Air Force. And for us, we, we could define the issue in particular ways, but that was translated very differently into the media. Because the more simplistic uh, media messages would come out that if there's scarcity, this will lead to conflict, and then this is the future that we have to see. And, and we, we approached it very differently, because we understood that if you only define it, if you only talk about it in terms of conflict, you're missing the entire scope of these are the different paths we can take to the future. And it's not all negative. I mean, there, there are going to be bad things happening. But we have some ability to choose which path we take. And whether it's greater cooperation, whether it's greater policy involvement at the community level, uh, increasing resilience of these communities, those, those are choices we can make now. So that when we look 30 years into the future, we don't just see death and destruction. And, and we, we're not just going to see a replication of the Syrian civil war but rather we can see adaptation measures that can actually get us to a better future. Uh, and, and, and not just less bad, but in investing in a low carbon economy so that you get these double plus goods. You're, you're increasing your economic output at the same time that you're decreasing uh, human insecurity in other countries. And I, I think that those are the sorts of stories that we need to tell rather than just the negative ones. Because if we only look at negative outcomes, it becomes overwhelming. It becomes the you know, people saying, we don't know where to intervene. We don't know where are the good points where we can actually do anything. And as a result, people will simply wall themselves off. And they'll think, if these are the climate migrants, let's just wall off the EU. And if this is going to happen in North America, let's just build a wall with Mexico and pretend that we have nothing to do with what happens in those countries. Uh, and we want to avoid those sorts of responses as much as possible.